In an era dominated by digital filmmaking, Strange Darling stands out for its bold choice shooting entirely on 35mm film. This decision is not just a nod to the past, but a deliberate artistic statement. In a world where digital technology offers convenience and precision, opting for 35mm film is a testament to the filmmaker's dedication to a particular aesthetic and storytelling approach. This decision, while seemingly anachronistic, injects a certain magic into the viewing experience. The tactile nature of film, the way light interacts with the celluloid, creates a visual texture that digital formats often struggle to emulate. It's a choice that speaks volumes about the filmmaker's vision and their desire to evoke a specific emotional response from the audience. The grain of the film, the subtle imperfections, all contribute to a sense of nostalgia. These elements are not flaws, but features that add character and depth to the imagery. Each frame becomes a canvas, painted with the unique qualities of the film stock, creating a visual poetry that resonates on a deeper level. It's like stepping back in time, immersing oneself in a cinematic aesthetic that feels increasingly rare. The experience of watching a film shot on 35mm is akin to visiting a vintage theater, where the ambiance and the medium itself transport you to a different era. It's a sensory journey that digital formats, despite their clarity and precision, often fail to deliver. This deliberate choice immediately sets the tone for a film that revels in the unconventional, hinting at a story told on its own terms. It signals to the audience that they are about to witness something distinct, something crafted with a level of care and attention that goes beyond the norm. The use of 35mm film becomes a narrative device in itself, enriching the storytelling with its inherent qualities. The use of 35mm isn't just about aesthetics. It speaks to a commitment to craft. It requires a different set of skills and a deeper understanding of the medium. The process of shooting on film is more meticulous, demanding a level of precision and patience that digital workflows often bypass. This commitment to the craft is evident in every frame, where the filmmaker's dedication to their art shines through. It's a deliberate artistic choice that permeates every frame of the film. The texture, the grain, the way light and shadow play on the film stock, all these elements contribute to a richer, more immersive visual experience. It's a reminder that the medium itself can be as much a part of the storytelling as the narrative and characters. The texture of the film stock adds a layer of depth and richness, enhancing the visual storytelling in a way that digital simply can't replicate. The organic quality of film, with its subtle variations and imperfections, creates a more lifelike and emotionally resonant image. It's a visual language that speaks to the heart as much as to the eyes. It's a reminder that sometimes the old ways are still the best, especially when it comes to crafting a truly unique cinematic experience. In a world where technology constantly pushes us towards the new and the efficient, there's something profoundly satisfying about returning to the roots of filmmaking. The choice to shoot on 35mm film is a celebration of the medium's history and its enduring power to captivate and inspire. It's a testament to the idea that in the realm of art, the journey is just as important as the destination. Strange Darling is a visual feast, seamlessly transitioning between stark black and white sequences and scenes saturated with vibrant colors. The film's unique aesthetic is not just a gimmick, but a profound storytelling tool that enhances the viewer's experience. This dynamic interplay of contrasting styles is jarring at first, but it quickly becomes clear that these visual shifts are deliberate, mirroring the emotional roller coaster of the narrative. The stark black and white scenes often serve as a visual metaphor for the character's internal struggles and moments of clarity. The black and white segments often depict moments of introspection, dreamscapes, or flashbacks, creating a sense of detachment. These scenes pull the audience into the characters' minds, offering a glimpse into their deepest thoughts and memories. The monochromatic palette strips away the distractions of color, focusing our attention on the raw emotions and psychological depth of the characters. In contrast, the vibrant color sequences burst onto the screen, pulsating with an energy that mirrors the characters' heightened emotions and the escalating tension of the plot. These scenes are often filled with action, passion, and intensity, drawing the audience into the immediate, visceral experiences of the characters. The use of color here is not just to dazzle the eyes, but to evoke specific emotional responses, making the narrative more immersive and impactful. These color shifts are not mere stylistic flourishes, 
They are integral to the storytelling, adding layers of meaning and interpretation to the unfolding drama. Each transition from black and white to color or vice versa signals a shift in the narrative, a change in perspective, or a pivotal moment in the story. The audience is invited to interpret these shifts, adding a layer of engagement and interactivity to the viewing experience. The director masterfully uses this visual language to guide the viewer through the labyrinthine narrative, prompting us to question what is real and what is imagined. The deliberate use of contrasting visual styles serves as a narrative device, blurring the lines between reality and fantasy, past and present, truth and illusion. This approach not only enhances the storytelling, but also challenges the audience to think critically about the nature of perception and reality. Behind the scenes, the collaboration between the director and the cinematographer is crucial in achieving this visual symphony. Storyboard sketches meticulously plan out the color transitions, ensuring that each shift serves the narrative purpose. The attention to detail in the planning stages is evident in the final product, where every frame feels intentional and meaningful. Audience reactions to Strange Darling's visual style have been overwhelmingly positive. Viewers are captivated by the film's ability to use color in black and white not just as aesthetic choices, but as essential elements of storytelling. Discussions often revolve around how these visual techniques enhance the emotional and psychological depth of the film, making it a memorable and thought-provoking experience. Film critics have also praised the movie for its innovative use of color and black and white. Reviews highlight how these elements are not just visually striking, but also deeply connected to the film's themes and narrative structure. The film's ability to seamlessly blend these contrasting styles has set a new benchmark in visual storytelling making it a standout piece in contemporary cinema. As the film reaches its climax, the interplay of black and white and color reaches its zenith, culminating in a visually stunning finale that leaves a lasting impression. The closing credits, accompanied by vibrant visuals, serve as a final reminder of the film's unique aesthetic and its powerful impact on the viewer. Strange Darling is not just a film. It's an experience that challenges the boundaries of visual storytelling. Its masterful use of black and white and color creates a rich, immersive narrative that stays with you long after the credits roll. The film introduces us to a cast of characters teetering on the edge of something dangerous and unknown. Each character is meticulously crafted, their expressions and body language hinting at the secrets they harbor and the fears they cannot escape. The tension is palpable, setting the stage for a story that promises to keep viewers on the edge of their seats. We meet Alice, a young woman grappling with a traumatic past, seeking solace in a secluded cabin in the woods. Her eyes reflect a deep sadness, a longing for peace that seems just out of reach. The cabin, rustic and isolated, offers her a temporary refuge from the chaos of her mind. Yet the silence of the woods is both a comfort and a torment, amplifying her inner turmoil. There's Jack, a mysterious and alluring drifter with secrets of his own, drawn to Alice's vulnerability. His presence is both intriguing and unsettling, a man whose past is as shadowy as the forest that surrounds them. Jack's eyes hold stories untold, and his demeanor suggests a man who has seen and done things that haunt him. His arrival at the cabin is no coincidence, and his intentions are as murky as the night. The initial interactions between Alice and Jack are charged with an undeniable tension, a palpable chemistry that hints at a deeper connection. Their conversations are laced with unspoken words, their glances filled with questions and suspicions. The air between them crackles with electricity, a mix of fear, curiosity, and an inexplicable pull towards each other. Each moment they share is a dance of emotions, a delicate balance of trust and mistrust. As they navigate their newfound companionship, the lines between reality and delusion begin to blur. Strange occurrences in the cabin and the forest make them question their sanity, is the danger real, or is it a manifestation of their troubled minds? Their bond grows stronger, yet the uncertainty of their situation creates a rift, a constant battle between belief and doubt. The surreal moments they experience together are both beautiful and terrifying, a testament to the fragile nature of their reality. The remote setting, shrouded in an unsettling quietude, becomes a character itself amplifying the character's anxieties and fueling a growing sense of paranoia. The forest, with its whispering leaves and hidden shadows, seems alive, watching, and waiting. 
The cabin, once a sanctuary, now feels like a trap, its walls closing in on them. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the wind, adds to the suspense, making the audience feel the weight of the character's fear. The audience is left questioning the nature of their relationship, unsure if they are drawn together by love, desperation, or something more sinister. Are they each other's salvation or downfall? The ambiguity of their emotions and intentions keeps viewers guessing, adding layers of complexity to their dynamic. As the story unfolds, the true nature of their connection is revealed, but not before taking the audience on a roller coaster of suspense and intrigue. The film masterfully weaves a tale of mystery, leaving a lasting impression long after the credits roll. Strange Darling unfolds in six distinct chapters, each marked by a title card that hints at the thematic focus of the segment. This episodic structure allows the director to explore different facets of the characters' psyches and the complexities of their relationship. It also serves to heighten the suspense, as each chapter ends on a cliffhanger, leaving the audience craving answers and eager to unravel the mysteries at the heart of the story. This fragmented narrative structure, while unconventional, is highly effective in maintaining tension and intrigue. It mirrors the fractured mental states of the characters and creates a sense of unease, constantly challenging the viewer's perceptions. Just when we think we've grasped the narrative thread,